turns out to be a beautiful day today. Plants are all loving it. They're getting sun and growing and flowing and showing. <laughs> it's funny, I uh, got a chance to put on my suit because today I'm doing some teaching tapes on uh, well, all kinds of subjects. I think we're doing fallacies today and getting a chance to discuss logic, information analysis, presentation of positive information when it comes to relating to the scripture and how sometimes people will misread or misunderstand what it is they're reading or sometimes how they get confused by people who are skilled at presenting argumentation and presentation of data in a formatted way that sometimes misleads people. And sometimes it's done on purpose, sometimes it's not. But all things, whenever we are caught into some kind of situation like that, should be taken to the Lord in prayer. Because, you see, we react. God acts. If we were to stop more often than we act, then we would evaluate information better and maybe process it in a more loving way than simply reacting in a negative or in a detrimental way to someone else's walk with the Lord because a lot of times there are what we call true believers where people actually sincerely believe what it is that they're teaching or what it is that they maybe were misled about and they don't know any better. I know on Facebook that happens a lot especially in Twitter or Facebook where people don't think and they just automatically respond boom, boom, boom and they write right away and they don't realize that those words are going to follow them around for a long time to come. They are permanently embossed somewhere. In other words, they're written down and recorded in some way, in some means, and suddenly you become attached to it. And I don't know about you, but I don't necessarily enjoy everything that I've ever said. You know, sometimes I get mad at my wife and say things I don't mean. She knows it, but it will hurt her feelings at times. And so. Knowing that we love each other, sometimes we're able to adapt by way of forgiveness and mercy and gradually you know, work on our relationship so that we don't do those things anymore. But it doesn't mean that we love each other less. It just means that we acted in haste and we should have been more prayerful maybe about it. And that's kind of what God's been saying to me this morning, you know, in God calling in devotionals today was that He wanted me to spend a little more time in prayer today. And so through the circumstances of my life, I wasn't able to record, so I got a chance to pray because there was a lot of noise going around in the background while gardeners were taking care of the lawns and the yards and stuff. And, and uh, the apartment complex, I like to call this our home. You know, so I got a chance to put the plants out and talk to God and take a shower and get cleaned up. And as I was in the shower, the Lord was talking to me about the body of Christ, you know, how just like our physical body, you know, we have, well, to put it bluntly, bowel movements. I mean, don't you? I do. <laughs> I think it's kind of common to man that we all have bowel movements. But nobody's ever given a teaching on, I don't think, except me, on God and bowel movements. How, you know, God is with you in your bathroom. That's kind of like my theme lots of times. It's like, you know, I like to tell people, hey, you know, when I'm laying in the tub, you know, full of hot water, Man, I'm just relaxed, and God's got my attention, and bingo, it's so quiet, and wow, me and him, we spend a lot of time together. And then in the shower, too. And I know that there's a few other people that have mentioned that. Michelle Pilar, for one. <laughs> he says, God speaks to her in the bathtub, you know, or in the shower. And it's like, me too. Hey, I've been there. And uh, so this morning, when I was spending that time, he was talking to me about bowel movements. Yeah, really, seriously, about, you know, poopers. <laughs> you know, like when you have that little pooper scooper for when you have your dog, you know, you go out and wander around in the parks, you know, and you're supposed to scoop up the poop, put it in a bag, get rid of it. Well, that's because people don't like to see your dog poop, you know. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't like to step in poop. I don't like to smell poop. And frankly, I don't like to deal with poop. Matter of fact, I think that's why we invented toilets, so that we don't have to deal with poop. Because it kind of stinks, doesn't it? Well, that's what's happening in the body of Christ a lot. Is that a lot of what's happening is there's a lot of poop out there. You know, refuse that once you've eaten the word, you know, 
you regurgitated what you needed for your own body, but then all of a sudden now you want to dump, you know, what you don't use anymore on someone else. And it stinks. <laughs> Matter of fact, I know it's poop because it does stink. It's stinking thinking. And man, I tell you, the body of Christ really, they need some pooper scoopers, you know. They need to walk around and kind of pick up some of this poop that they're laying around because people are stepping in it, you know, and it kind of, ugh. You know, then you got to wash your shoes off or your feet off, and God forbid if you're walking around barefoot, you know, stepped in that. So, frankly, you know, I think, you know, that a lot of times the body of Christ needs to be aware that because it is a body, it has poop and it needs to deal with that. Now, another subject that God brought up to me was, you know, kind of like how we get older and some older people, you know, if they don't watch their diet, well, frankly, you know, they get constipated, you know, and I think the body of Christ in a lot of ways gets constipated. You know, they're full of poop and you know who they are because it's not that they stink because they don't, because they can't poop. They haven't had their morning constitutional, as it used to be called. And so it's not that they stink but it's that they have a bad attitude, you know. They seem to kind of be a little bitter and a little out of kilter and not quite with it, you know, because frankly, if you hadn't pooped for a while, you would be very uncomfortable too. And as a matter of fact, don't you feel uncomfortable around them? I mean, maybe they just need to go have a good poop. I know if you're 50 plus, you celebrate each poop that you get. Yeah, Lord! Thank you, God, for another day with poopers. <laughs> I tell my wife every morning, you know, hey, how's, how's those little poopers doing? Are they working overtime in there? You know, is, is God blessed you with, you know, little poops <laughs> or big poops? Did you poop today? You know, because I know that if she doesn't, ooh, man, I don't want to be around. So it's a joke for me. You know, I think it's funny. I, I enjoy that. And she kind of, you know, didn't think it was so funny. Till you know a few years have gone by, <laughs> and you realize that if you develop a sense of humor and you do it in such a humorous way, like I can, then you kind of get used to it, sort of. You know, she'll probably tell you that she killed me after seeing this video because I'm talking about poop. <laughs> but you see, I have to because the body of Christ takes in the Word of God from all kinds of sources. They don't have much of a diet choice, you know, they just kind of like stuff in everything that they can find and nine times out of ten it's fast food because they just want to hurry up and eat. So they'll just stuff in a video here and a teaching there and, you know, kind of like check out this on the web, you know, and grab that there on Facebook, you know, and get something out of Twitter, you know, and kind of do this fast food, you know, we are going to eat everything and frankly I think that they're, you know, constipated because they didn't eat healthy food. I think some prunes are called for. It's time for a good poop for the body of Christ. Because <laughs> uh, I'm very uncomfortable around some of you, and frankly, I don't think that it's really so much that you not really don't have a relationship with the Lord, but I think maybe your diet is a little off, you know, and you've been kind of like not paying attention to what the normal body of Christ does. You know, love, joy, peace, meekness, kindness, temperance, gentleness. I think with all these politics going on, I think you've been like, eating in all the political stuff, you know, and it's just junk food, and you've been taking in a lot of junk food over and over and over again, that all of a sudden you're constipated, and you're constipated on politics. And so, it, you're kind of uncomfortable to be around, because all you want to do is, like, hate the president, or hate the Democrats, or hate the Republicans, or hate the conservatives, or hate the liberals, or hate the independents. Or whatever it is, you know, like this person's lying, that person's lying, this person's doing this, that person's doing that. Oh, this person's the Antichrist. Oh, that person is not. Uh, can, can I suggest that maybe you're full of poop and that a lot of coming out of your mouth maybe isn't quite, you know, what God intended, you know, when you were eating, you know, the Word of God, when you were, you know, like kind of getting the vitamins out of that food that the Word is called and then. Pardon me, but, you know, I think once you get rid of some of that stuff you're carrying around, you know, inside, <laughs> then you'd be a lot more comfortable to be around. Because maybe you'd be talking about God more. Maybe a little more about Jesus. Because, frankly, I think you're constipated. Of course, then again, there's also in the body of Christ, a lot of you, you know, I, I, I don't want to sound like, you know, the master of poop, you know, because I'm full of 
poop, but I'm not because mine's regulated. <laughs> I don't have that anymore. I'm kind of an ostomate. I have a bag on my side, so I take care of mine pretty easy. So me and God, we got a good thing going. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's easy. <laughs> I take care of it right away. Woohoo! <laughs> what goes in must come out. Ah! And I get a little bit of benefit from it. Thank you, God. Because, frankly, there's also kind of like, you know, some of you have in the body of Christ diarrhea. Yeah, you just kind of like, you know, everything that's coming in is going out, you know, and it's like, ooh, and it's just runny, you know, it's all over the place, you know. You haven't even read it, you haven't even studied it, you haven't even seen if it's true. You're just diarrhea Christians, you know, you're kind of like passing around all this poop that's ugh, yucky, icky. You didn't even bother checking. I know because I see it and I tell you and you go, oh, I didn't know that that's what it said. Well, then why are you passing it around? I mean, come on now. Are you stupid? <laughs> no. Well, then maybe you need to take in some milk and egg or something, you know, or Pepto-Bismol or, you know, kind of Metamucil it, you know, because you need to slow down what's coming out because, frankly, you know, it's just going in and out, you know, and you're passing it around and everybody's getting it and, you know what, we don't want it. <laughs> No offense, but you need to go take care of that problem, you know, and slow down on what you're throwing around, because it stinks. So, I think in the body of Christ, there's a lot of people that really aren't paying attention to what they're doing. You know, they're kind of like free with their poop. You know, they're just like, ooh, we're going to spread that around, and it's freely flowing, because it's going all over the place, whether on Facebook or Twitter or whatever social media you're using, Pinterest or anything. You know, you're willing to tell everyone about it. It's like... Uh, excuse me, <laughs> too much information, like, and then too much false information, TMIF, too much information falsely, and too much information not checked, or too much information not proven. So, when you get into these conspiracy sites, could you keep it to yourself, you know, really? I mean, you know, I mean, you don't read National Enquirer and think it's true, I hope, although I know most of you think so, and frankly, that's kind of like that junk food diet I've been telling you about. If you read the Word of God, you know, you kind of get healthy food, but you still got to kind of gurgitate it, and some of it, after you eat it, it's going to come out. you got to accept that fact that when God created the body, He created to take in the vitamins and to kind of get rid of the garbage. And if you haven't gotten the garbage out of you, then in the body of Christ, you're a constipated, pardon the expression, Christian. Or maybe you're a diuretic, meaning diarrhea, <laughs> Christian, of the mouth or the other end. One way or another, it's coming out and it stinks. Or maybe you're a a, a, a regular Christian. You go every day and you're like, yes, praise the Lord, I'm gone. I had my poopers today. <laughs> Ooh, wow. You must be 50 or 60 because you're rejoicing in it. You rejoice in the fact that you had a bowel movement. Ooh, maybe that's what the body of Christ needs to rejoice in their battle movements. Or maybe they need to have them. So you see, I think that when I take the time to stop and pray and to talk to God, yes, He gets personal with me. There are subjects I'm not bringing up. <laughs> uh, but you porno addicts, I got your number. You know, don't you ever come at me. I'll tell you right where you're at. I can find out where you've been. There's a history there. But the point being is that God sees all. God created all. God knows all. And God wants to deal with us on all subjects in a reality way. And so you know what I'm saying. And it's not an analogy. It's a fact of life. You do poop. And you need to take care of it. You eat spiritually, you poop spiritually. You need to get rid of some of the junk that you got. Because what you're taking in your eyes, what you're taking in your ears, and what you seem to be chewing on isn't necessarily profitable for the rest of us to see. We would rather you go take care of your business in the bathroom alone with God than to spread it around with the rest of us. Because frankly, it stinks and we're tired of it. And we just don't want to deal with it. So could you deal with God alone, one-on-one, -on -one, so that you can deal with us one-to-one? -one? Because you see, that's kind of what the devotional is about, is that if you don't spend time with God first before you spend time with others, all we're getting is your flesh. 
because you're not giving us anything spiritual. So, whenever you start your day, you ought to pray and pray with the idea that you're carrying on a conversation with God that you can talk to Him about everything because He may want to talk to you about something specific. And today He was talking about poop. <laughs> I know, that's a hard subject for you to understand, but if it's a soft subject, that could be just as bad. So if it's a runny subject, well, guess what? That's even worse. So go to God and find out. <laughs> Are you one of those that's suffering from, you know, you need some pooper scoopers to follow behind you to clean up your mess? Or do you know how to take care of this? And just go in the bathroom, take your time, spend some time with God, or your devotional, or wherever, and you know how to handle your own personal hygiene. Because if you don't get your spiritual house in order, one-on-one, -on -one, you're going to affect your wife, your kids, your house, your home, your relatives, everybody around you, and everything else, and we're all going to know that you need to have a bowel movement. <laughs> get rid of that junk. Perfect work. Spend more time alone with me. A strength and a joy come from such times that will add much to your friendship and much to your work, including your ministry for me. Times of prayer are times of growth. Cut those times short, and many well-filled hours of work may be profitless and accomplish nothing. Heaven's values are so different from the values of earth. Remember that from the point of view of the great worker, one poor tool working all the time but doing bad work is of small value compared with the sharp, keen, perfect instrument used only a short time but which turns out perfect work. You know, you don't use a hammer, you know, all the time, except for a nail. And so a lot of times when I see these people trying to smash each other, you know, with a hammer, I kind of wonder, you know, do they need a nail? Do they need a board? Do they need to go find something to build? Because Whenever they're smashing other Christians, I figure they just forgot how to use a hammer. You know, because you don't use a hammer to smash a toe. And I think that's what happens a lot of times when people are preaching instead of teaching. Is that they're going around, you know, just smashing because like a little kid, you know, they got this little toy hammer and they said, Oh look, I can beat things with it. So they beat a window, they beat a head, they beat you, they beat me, they smash a toe, they smash a finger. They never knew that the hammer was meant to take a nail and you drive the nail into the wood. Wow! Maybe they need some training. Maybe they are still not quite potty trained. Potty trained! That reminds me! Isn't that what we're talking about? Ah! So you see, you reveal more than you know by how you deal with life in general. If you are spending quality time with Jesus, it will be obvious to us and we can either smell it, see it, or we can tell just by your attitude because frankly, we're uncomfortable around you and so are others. So you might want to kind of check into that peace, love, and joy thing, you know, because no offense, but if you ain't there and you ain't accomplishing it, you're on the wrong track, heading the wrong way, doing the wrong thing at the wrong time for the wrong reasons. But if you are kind of like beginning to get a little more peace, you know, in the midst of trials, tribulations, and anxieties, and fears, and worries, if you got peace, hey, you're on the right track. If you got some love going on, you know, and you can love the president, or love, you know, people that you don't like, you know, love things that you necessarily wouldn't have normally put up with, but you would have, you know, shot them or done something stupid, you know, but you love them now because God died for them, then you're on the right track. But if you're out there kind of causing problems and doing all this stuff, you know, and making controversies where not should be, can I make a suggestion? Could you go to the bathroom and take care of your mess? Because frankly, you need some diapers. You know, I mean, no offense to you, but I think that you had an accident and it's all over you and everyone else knows it. Might be time to get that fixed. Maybe you can talk to Jesus about it. He could explain to you whether you're a <laughs> constipated Christian, whether you got diarrhea, <laughs> ooh, or whether you kind of like you know are regular, you know, or whether you uh, might want to adjust your diet a little bit because, frankly, you know your bowel movements are pretty messed up, but they stink pretty bad. I don't know what you've been eating, but would you please change your diet? <laughs> ooh, wow, praise the Lord. <laughs> so. I don't know about you, but you know, me, I'm kind of glad that you know I had surgery. Because because of my surgery, God took care of my 
whole problem when it came to Hoopers. <laughs> and I don't have to worry about Hoopers, man, because he's got it handled with what he did to me and allowed me to go through. Oh, sure, there's a little suffering involved, but you know what? This suffering was nothing compared to the joy that I have now, and I am so thankful. <laughs> Thank you, God, for what He allowed me to go through. And I hope you don't have to go through what I went through in order to take care of your pooper problem, because I am pretty confident. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. 